I'm not going to talk about our farm very much. I'm hoping to take a broader view on how we can move ahead. And uh, Hans, I worked closely with Hans for a long time. Uh, there's no one I respect more other than maybe my father. And he would never defend himself. So I'm going to share with you <clears throat> that I've seen that he probably more than any other person in the world has influenced agriculture to move quickly ahead to address climate change, both within Nestle, which is the largest food company in the world, but also to cause all the global food companies together to figure out how do we solve this problem, which is much larger than any company. So Hans, thank you for your vision and your energy and your inspiration. Thank you for allowing me to tell our story. Um, I added a few slides this morning for uh, interest sake, maybe comedy. This is uh, last winter. It was the coldest winter recorded in history uh, in the Cuga County. It was the uh, most snowfall recorded in Cuga County history. Uh, I don't believe that's advancing. Let's see if I can. This is actually a video that was taken. It doesn't seem to want to move ahead, but uh, maybe you can figure out how to get it to advance. So this is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in February, and I would have defined sustainability on that day at that time as very high levels of production and low losses, as Hans summarizes sustainability at a farm level. <clears throat> the... Uh, Cold and the snow that winter caused the snow to build up on the roof and it would shrink. And then we'd get more snow and it'd shrink. The design load on this barn was 40 pounds per square foot. That's a standard engineering design for that part of New York State. At uh, 327, the roof collapsed. So I hope to show this video because you see the heifers. Is there a pointer here? Okay, which is uh, right there. Okay, there's a group of heifers right here, and five seconds before the roof collapsed, they moved quickly to that little corner. It's just like boom, just like that. Within five seconds, the roof collapsed. We lost two two heifers in that situation, and it's a real study in animal behavior because. The cows on this side rushed around the corner to escape the danger and immediately turned around and rushed back to see what happened to their friend or <laughs> not sure what they were. But at 3.30, my definition of sustainability changed. <laughs> sustainability at that point is how do I keep our people and our animals alive for the next six hours? Uh, our staff had moved through that half an hour before it collapsed, and our animals, uh, we have like four acres of roof with three feet of snow. How do you solve that problem? C tremendous challenge. That's good. Like the media file is not on there. Okay, that explains it. I think I talked it through. So sustainability has uh, got a lot of different definitions at different times. So Sunday afternoon, can you still hear in the back? Sunday afternoon, uh, we have a 16-inch manure pipe that delivers sand and manure to the sand separator and digester. It was plugged completely, first time that's happened. So Sunday night, till 9 and then Monday all day, this is what I did. <laughs> this is the pit underneath our barns that was this much sand. We had to clean it out. So... Dean, you guys can relate to these kind of challenges. We went from manure solids to sand because we wanted to extend the life of our animals, which is a major step forward in sustainability. However, sand has a whole set of challenges of its own. All right, so Peter showed a few nice slides of our nutrient boom yesterday, and this is the text I received during the meeting yesterday from my son who's trying to do a test plot in the state of Ohio. 
All right, see, these fields are 90 to 180 acres square clay, perfectly flat. Not perfectly flat, we learned yesterday. <laughs> see this little, that's called a field drainage. It's like a six inch drain, so, so the water runs off. Well, these blooms are top heavy, so that's what happens. So, uh, half an hour later, I got another text from my son. <laughs> This is the other one. We have two booms there. So now they're both tipped right over. And he says, we're done. We have 40 staff members on our farm. And he's the only one that raised his hand and says, I'll do it. And yesterday he said, we're done. So the concept here is the only one that I'm aware of that can address comprehensively the water quality issues in the Midwest and in Cuga County. The concept is sound, but moving from a concept to a practical operating system is almost like what you guys went through with your <laughs> digester in California. So the, Drew decided to stay there and fight it out for another day or two. We'll see how that turns out. But you'll see the corn in that field. This is in Ohio. Phenomenal soils. And that's the corn yesterday. This is the first day all summer that we've had a chance to get on that field to deliver manure. So the climate change, who knows? But uh, So big picture, working with Hans and with uh, the U.S. Dairy Innovation Center, which Skip is on board and a number of you are involved. Uh, I think there's more potential now to move agriculture fairly quickly in the right direction uh, than ever before for lots of reasons. But this is the framework that I see it happening. Uh, so I've advocated this. I call this the whole farm best practices partnership. So the heart of it is the farm the base, because 70 to 80 percent of the advance we need to make in carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, resource recovery is at the farm. So the farm has to be at the center of the research and development and development of solutions for these huge challenges. So the volunteer farms now there's uh, about 30 from mostly concentrated Cuga County, but some in the Midwest, some in Kansas, some in Minnesota and uh, one or two in California. <clears throat> this is farm smart. You've heard a little about that. That is a process based model that is being developed by the U.S. dairy industry. Every dairy farmer in the United States pays a little bit every month to fund farm smart. And it's like a nutrition program for a cow. Dairymen wouldn't consider trying to milk cows without nutrition program. Dairy farmers have no idea what all the math is inside of there, right? All they know is if they do this, the cows give a lot of milk. <laughs> this farm smart is like a nutrition program for the whole farm, but it looks at carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and it allows the scientists, this is what you were mentioning yesterday, exactly what you were mentioning, it allows a farmer to look at the whole resource system coming into the farm, leaving the farm, what's happening to it in the middle, how do we keep it in the system? Dana Hall is over there. Would you stand up, Dana, please? He is, he's our sustainability director, which he's doing as a retire, retired uh, PhD rocket scientist. He worked for NASA for a number of years. He was responsible for the control systems in the space station. So if you consider a resource, a closed loop system, that's, that's the ultimate closed loop system. So he's very intrigued with helping agriculture. How do we close the loop? Not 100%, but can we get from 25% to 50% or to 75%? So he is the director of this effort for our farm, which was the first farm to step out. Cornell University has signed this as a partner. Uh, Nestle has committed, Cargill has committed, a number of farms. But it's really powerful because it has, it's under the umbrella of the Dairy Innovation Center, Site Platform, which is the global food companies. You've got your 
the lines here are contracts. So we have our companies that buy our milk. They can help develop solutions and encourage farmers to develop, develop new ideas and implement them quickly to make progress. This is a contract between the farm and the USDA through all the grant programs that exist now. So their county offices can help fund innovations and take some of the risk from the farm. So you've got USDA, uh, I used to say this was Peter Wright until he retired. Now I'm not sure who the state engineer is, but these are the folks that say, here's a BMP, best management practice. These farms have to do these things. But you can't do that until you know they work. They gotta solve the problem, they gotta be profitable. So this is a system where farmers supported by the whole industry can move ahead quickly in developing better ideas to solve these problems. And the USDA can support it. The scientists, USDA, ARS, these are dotted lines. They have full access to all the information on FarmSmart on any of these farms. So they can say, okay, now I see what the farm's doing. What if they try this? What if they try that? So the farmer looks at his 20 choices and says, I can't do all these, maybe I'll do one and two. And then we measure them. So the land grants, Cornell, Purdue, Ohio State, Colorado State, so far. All right, let's set up a control study. Let's see if it works. Let's publish the data. Once it's peer-reviewed data, it's proven that it works and it's profitable. Then it goes into the software. So farmers in the U.S. and around the world can look at mitigation options and say, does it work? What's the payback? And then they can move forward with confidence. That's going to move us from here to here. Sorry to go on so long about that. This is a Farm Smart program. Uh, please get on the website of Dairy Management Incorporated and understand it. Uh, there's some of the scientists that have been instrumental in its development are here. Uh, and had a good discussion last night about are we on the right track? How do we move ahead and get more support from more organizations to progress more quickly? Mass balance, that's the name of the game. Carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, potassium. That's all there is. <laughs> this is a digester we built last year after 20 years of exploration and many trips to Europe. It uh, cost $1.8 million, which is 40% lower than any other alternative available. It works uh, very efficient. Uh, welcome to stop by and look at it anytime. I think Cornell is considering the same design for their dairy. This is the nutrient boom when it's standing upright. <laughs> this is a research trial that we did with Purdue two years ago. Uh, this is a version two. We already have version three built. Version four is in the, on the drawing boards. And as of yesterday, version four is going to have some modifications. <laughs> We already have three or four options considering. <laughs> but it's fun to watch. Uh, the lower right shows that manure nutrients, which is the perfect plant food, it's being delivered to those roots when it's needed. So it will immediately be taken up by the plant to optimize growth. Uh, almost no compaction, no odor. And uh, it's, it's going to really speed up the, the advance of the soil health when you're feeding that soil with exactly what it needs to advance the microbiology. I think I'm overdue here. What's the time? Okay, okay. five minutes or three? Five. Five. No more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a third major initiative that we're implementing on the uh, Whole Farm Best Practices Partnership. We think there's three that can move us from here to here fairly quickly. And uh, this is the third that we have uh, really are excited about. It's a minimum tillage. It's a vertical tillage system. So it lifts and fluffs the soil, leaves all the organic matter in the, where it's needed as food for the microbiology to flourish. Uh, on farms where this has been used, we, uh, we're going to do some more testing. But 
Uh, yields are substantially improved. Get an extra year, maybe two, on alfalfa. Uh, there's a farm on the eastern shore of Lake Ontario that's class four clay soils that got 30 tons of corn last year. <clears throat> Think of that. We had 20 on honey oil soils in Cougar County. If we did this on our soils, we should have 40 tons per acre every year. The other thing that's really intriguing is what happens, societies are going downhill in terms of financially, mostly because of health care costs. It's increasing at twice the rate of inflation. Totally unsustainable. So what about food correcting those major illnesses that are overwhelming our societies? Soil health, in my view, is the key. Because if you transform a soil, this is not based on a whole career of science, but listening to an agronomist that I've gone and seen what he is uh, moving ahead with, transforming the soil from a bacterially populated to a fungal population, the fungal population has the ability to break down those chemicals that we need so very much, like glyphosate, into its basic components. So there's zero buildup in those soils, zero buildup in the foods. Think of the implications on human population if you can reduce those tools that we so desperately need in agriculture to continue to feed the world and to feed them in a way that they're healthy. This is uh, irrigation. This boom, I think, has a tremendous opportunity to improve the efficiency of water use in areas where water is so severely limited. Need to do a lot of study to measure. measure. This is the milk price. This is something Han showed last night. Uh, we've been interacting with Nestle and other companies trying to figure out a more rational pricing system for both the consumers and the processors and the farmers and it's doable it's doable soon and hopefully we will be able to in three years show you how it worked that's it any 